Hi, I'm Pastor Josh, and I thank you for wanting to learn more about Holy Communion for your children. Here at St. Luke and in the ELCA, we believe that there is only one thing that our children or anybody needs to participate in Holy Communion, and that is baptism. When we're baptized, we have a need inside of us to commune. You may have noticed your own children asking for communion or reaching for the bread and wine, the body and blood of Christ. This is a beautiful thing and a sign of their readiness and their matureness in faith. We all grew up in different traditions and in different households. And I know that for many of us, we had wonderful experiences holding off on taking Holy Communion. Myself, I remember it, I took Holy Communion right after I was confirmed. It was a time of preparation for me and the other students to really learn what Holy Communion meant in our lives. I wanted that experience for my own children. Um, when I went to seminary in Gettysburg, uh, my, my kids were young. Um, our oldest two children were probably about seven and five years old. And in the seminary chapel, all of the children were invited to commune. Anybody that reached out, for the hand, out, reached out their hand for the body and blood of Christ were welcomed at Christ's table. It was different than what I had grown up with. Again, I was about 12, 13. I was confirmed uh, right after confirmation that same day. I got to have Holy Communion for the first time, and it was such a wonderful and meaningful experience. I wanted that for my own kids. And so whenever my children asked if they could participate, I explained that there would be a day that that would happen, and it would be an important day for them, and that we would continue to discuss it. This happened for about six months, and um, I discovered in myself when my children were asking for Holy Communion, I, I, I discovered that I was keeping my kids from Holy Communion. Um, this was very hard for me to accept um, in my seminary career. Um, being a pastor, it's about inviting people to the table. Um, and yet with my own children, I was telling them that they needed to wait. They needed to hold off. I needed them to have the experience that I had that was really important for me. And I realized one day, this was the work of the Holy Spirit, I guarantee it, that they knew that they needed Holy Communion, that deep down inside of them, that when they were baptized, um, they started to develop this need and this want. I was worried that maybe they thought it was a snack. Maybe they thought it was grape juice and a cookie. I think those are valid concerns. But I'd like to share with you what happened when my children actually took communion for the first time. It was a very small service on Thanksgiving Day at the chapel uh, at the seminary in Gettysburg. There kind of have been more than 30 people there. We had chairs set up around the table. Um, being such a small group, we decided we were going to go right up, uh, right up front. And my kids asked if they could have Holy Communion, and my wife and I had discussed that earlier that day, earlier that week, that this would be the day if they asked, we would say yes, finally. They asked, we said yes, and that five and seven-year-old smiled from ear to ear in a way that I haven't seen many times in their lives. Now I'd like to share that at, um, the bread at the seminary in Gettysburg was a gluten-free bread. Um, I'm gluten-free myself, and it's a little bit sweet. It's a little tasty. It's a little dense, um, but it's good. The wine, on the other hand, was the driest wine that I think I've ever tasted. Chianti um, might be a good example if you've ever had Chianti. The kids took the bread, closed their eyes, and prayed. We didn't tell them to do that. They'd seen it in their community. They knew what to do. I was a little nervous when the wine came around. I knew what it was going to be. They had never tasted anything like it before in their lives. I expected them to think that it was going to be like grape juice, sweet. They took back that little cup of that dry red wine, and I thought they were going to gasp. I thought they were going to gag. I thought they were going to make a face, do everything that they shouldn't do, and they didn't. 
They sat there, and it didn't matter what it tasted like. They were finally included in the community in a way that was very important for them. I was delighted. It was definitely a a day for Thanksgiving. It, It was literally Thanksgiving Day. I learned at that point that I had been the stumbling stone or the stumbling block between my children and Jesus Christ. That really hurt me as a parent. And so I I share this story with you in hopes that if you're experiencing something like this, that um, you no longer have to do that. Um, In the Lutheran Church, particularly in the ELCA, we are very adamant that knowledge is not what makes you worthy to have Holy Communion. That's a great heresy called Gnosticism. It's one that the church has fought for over a thousand years It creeps back into our lives, and it creeps back into the church sometimes. Again, Holy Communion is not something that we have to learn about, but it is something that we should know about. I encourage parents to come visit with me or to join one of the First Communion training classes at church. We'll try to do one at least once a year. If there's more need or we need to meet individually, I would take great joy in that. I would encourage that uh, if you're wondering if it's the right time, if you're seeing your kids reach up for the body and blood of Christ, to have them come and learn a little bit more about it. It's more about an appreciation for what it is than anything. Again, our children have everything that they need being baptized to be able to commune in this church. And I know that You may have been 12 or 13 before you had your first communion. You may have been in fifth grade, like many churches. Um, Just make a mark, make a set point of they're probably old enough here. If your child knows that the you, and this is my body given for you, and this is my blood shed for you, if if your child knows that the you is them, and they reach out their hand, It's the right time to start having these conversations. It's the right time to come and visit with me or to send your kids to First Communion training. We would invite you to stay and participate and learn yourselves. But again, it's not about knowledge. It's about faith. And it's a beautiful thing to see that faith grow in your children. I hope you'll take me up on a meeting. I hope you'll think about sending your children this year to First Communion classes. It's just a one morning brief training, but it's a wonderful thing. And I really do encourage you, if you ever find yourself being that stumbling block, keeping your children from something that they need and they ask for, the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Don't make the same mistake that I did. Know that God is inviting them, and they have everything that they need as long as they know it's for them. Goodbye. And thank you.